Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go. So our San Antonio Spurs announcing a new jersey sponsor. It's like a new jersey, not the state. So it is self-financial, or just self, that's what's going to read on the patch. An Austin-based company with credit building technology. So take a look. Yesterday we saw the new patch. Josh Primo was the jersey model as self replaces San Antonio-based Frost Bank, who chose to put their money and their name on the Rock at La Quintera. Remember, the Rock at La Quintera, that is the Spurs' $500 million development on the northwest side that will include the Spurs new training facility and of course state-of-the-art medical and research offices. The CEO of Spurs Sports and Entertainment, R.C. Buford, there yesterday at the AT&T Center for this big announcement including self-financial officials. Values alignment is first and I think from there it was really trying to, to help each other um, find out ways that we could in improve and build our brands. What attracted us to the Spurs is the company's values around integrity. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with and you know we've also seen that customers uh, like the Spurs a lot so it's just been a perfect partnership and uh, we're really excited for the future. So the next order of business for the Spurs will be announcing the new naming rights for the home arena. Remember, this comes after the 20-year deal for $40 million with AT&T expired at the end of last season. So that decision and the new name should come before this fall. How about them Aggies? Oh my goodness. So yesterday facing another elimination game in the College World Series. They went up against the Cinderella story, the fight in Irish Notre Dame at the College World Series in Omaha. No score, top of the third, and the Aggies had the bases loaded. The Irish bring in their star freshman at Jack Finley getting them out of the jam, and after one strikeout, the defense lets them down. Dylan Rock with the shot to the hot corner. The throw from third to first hits the dirt. As you saw, they just can't take it out. Two runs will score, including Bernie Champion Zone, Jason Thompson, and the Aggies took a 2-0 lead. It'd be 3-0 following a sack fly. Top of the fifth, Trevor Werner with the whammy. The solo blast to left makes it 4 nothing. and really, guys, the Aggies never had to look back. They would go up and win 5-1. to one. So Aggies on a roll. A rematch with Oklahoma, 1 o'clock this afternoon. So they're still in the run. And we know the Longhorns came home. I'm sorry. But <laughs> bring it up. <laughs> Aggies still in it. So yes. you never know. Yes. <laughs> and it's funny because I was making fun of Justin Horn, who's an Aggie alum. Yes. I said, you know, the Aggies have the worst odds right now. And he's like, just wait. So, Justin, if you're watching. What do you mean? They've been doing great. Yeah, though. they have. Good for them. All right, 443, 78 degrees out. And still ahead, we head to Disaster City and College Station to hear from crews who are hoping for the best but preparing for the worst. Good morning and welcome back. Well, hurricane season is here, and that means several state agencies are preparing for the worst. One team's focus is actually on the sky. It's the GTAC team that operates within customers and border protection. And KSET photojournalist Bill Caldera shares how they are using the experiences from Hurricanes Harvey and Ida to prepare for future large scale disasters. Hurricane one, are you able to do a dynamic hoist? Pick up one, move him on the wire, drop him off, pick up another one. Same. Yes, they can do that. Coach Juan, conduct dynamic hoisting at the Amtrak at this time. Good copy. Practice makes perfect in my opinion. We're going to put these guys through some serious scenarios. Closure, raise your altitude, 50 feet. We're also getting tested here. They're going to put a bunch of birds into this location simultaneously. And one or two, we're going to be inbound. The airspace here is very crowded. That needs to be hoisted out of there immediately. Priority, just a child. Priority, child. Copy, child. We will get called upon to support a state and local assets during a hurricane situation. Much like we've seen in Hurricane Harvey's many years back, we have federal assets and state assets working together to uh, perform rescues. Customs and Border Protection Ground Tactical Air Controller, also known as GTAC. You'll see GTAC, basically those are air traffic controllers that are uh, coordinating the survivors and the rescuers. Our job is to communicate with them, make sure there's airspace deconfliction, and it's our job to make sure they don't hit each other. Transition to the 
white bus. It also provided that situational awareness and the information that we see on the ground back to the command center and that they can duck those hoisters uh, properly and safely, uh, which is the most important thing. We need to be able to talk in the skies, talk on the ground, talk from the ground to the skies to perform rescues. Uh, not only are we, the GTACs here, providing the airspace deconfliction and congested airspace, but we also have our P3 Orion early warning radar system where they're able to fly over a congested airspace with their radar and determine how congested it is and be able to provide that airspace deconfliction from the air as well, kind of like a mobile air traffic controller. We've been out here since 10 o'clock this morning. Um, we're going to continue to stay out here until the last aircraft comes in and conducts the rescue. And that would be the same on responding to a, a national emergency. And again, that was KSET photojournalist Bill Caldera putting that together. That was amazing stuff. Yeah, really good. And a look at Transguide again, that situation at I-35 and Knox Road clearing up. Looks like things are moving now, at least slowly, but they are moving. All right. Now, one of the big questions, Mike, is anyone going to see any rain on the roadways anytime soon? Well, maybe later on this afternoon, not this morning. There's nothing showing up. And the same thing that we had yesterday uh, and the day before that, just one or two of those pop-up showers. And some folks actually saw uh, some pretty big clouds billowing up in the distance and this was a little bit further off to these but here's what it looked like with the uh, satellite radar loop going back 12 hours and once this starts over again you can see just one or two of those you know stray showers and uh, this storm right here watch as this goes back through right about there that was probably the one that folks were uh, looking at with that uh, actually some Folks did actually take a picture of what looked like an animal cloud up there, which is usually can, uh, you know, associated with some bigger thunderstorms well off to the northeast. Really not looking at any thunderstorms today. A couple of those stray showers here or there, but at least some folks will get a brief shower and then better rain chances down the road. We do have a few more clouds hanging around here this morning than the past couple of mornings. These dew points are up a couple of degrees even compared to yesterday. It doesn't seem like a lot. The difference, you know, one, two, three degrees, but that does make a whole lot of difference when we've got these dew points well up into the 70s. We're going to be staying in the upper 70s throughout the rest of the morning. Some sunshine it's going to start to squeeze through later on, and then that's going to warm us up quickly. We make it up to 90 at noon, and then, of course, we are going to be topping off at 100 again today. We did hit it yesterday, and there's that 10% chance for one or two of those stray showers to pop up, as this computer model is indicating later on today. Just a couple of them here or there. Um, okay, maybe you know, one or two of these, a, a slightly heavier downpour, and perhaps even one or two claps of thunder off to the east, but like I said, not really uh, looking at a whole lot of uh, thunder from these, just a couple of uh, scattered showers. And then this model does also have one or two of them trying to pop up again tomorrow. So, okay, now yeah, if you get a stray shower or two. Now, let's jump into the future, and long-range computer models still have some of this rain around here later Monday, and then also going into Tuesday again. One thing you have to kind of interpret this, it does kind of broad brush things, um, so it won't be raining constantly, not everywhere, but at least there is that chance, especially going into Tuesday and maybe even lingering into Tuesday night as well as going into Wednesday. So this is encouraging. Still have to qualify it as saying it's not written in stone as of yet, but the consistency has been there for the past uh, three days as far as long range computer models. So that's always a good sign. 90 at noon today, mostly sunny skies, 100 for high temperature. We are going to have a couple of those stray showers popping up later on today. One or two of them tomorrow as well. Now, the good news is we do have those rain chances later on in the week. The bad news is it's going to be getting hotter before that gets here. We're looking at uh, temperatures going up one, two, three oh. degrees as we go on into the uh, Yes. Yeah. You like the. Uh, we got two. You but like now the it's on there? 30%. I like, I'm like, I'm liking Well, that. now we added I, Tuesday. Yeah. We're doubling down over here. So it was. You got a gambler to my right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is looking like, a, like I said, an okay chance of rain by later Monday and then Tuesday. Not written in stone, but and that should also with cloud cover and that little bit of a front lingering in the area. And, you know, the thing also you got to keep in mind too is cold fronts moving through here in the summertime. That's like winning the lottery. It just doesn't really happen that much. So this thing's going to be just close enough, I think, to uh, hold temperatures down a few degrees and give us that rain chance. So well, that'll be good enough for it's, now. <laughs> it's nice to see. Yeah. So it's nice to hope for that. Thank you, Mike, for the mm -hmm. good news. Thank you, Mike. 452, 78 degrees out.
And coming up next, Elvis's family reacts to the new newest movie based on his life, plus a look at how the final two episodes mm. of Stranger Things, season four. Good morning and welcome back. So the new Elvis movie gets ready to premiere this weekend, plus Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson. Team, I love Kevin Hart. Yes. Big fan. <laughs> Me too. Very funny. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Honoring Elvis in Hollywood, his ex-wife Priscilla Presley, their daughter Lisa Marie, and their granddaughters putting their hands in cement in front of the TCL Chinese Theater ahead of this weekend's release of the movie Elvis. Oh, uh, certainly had Elvis lived, he would have been given this honor and proudly become a part of this great Hollywood tradition and Hollywood history. Hola. I am the man from Toronto. Objection. No. I'm the man from Toronto. Oh, so this is on you. Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson have been a part of some pretty iconic on-screen duos, and now they're teaming up for The Man from Toronto. They share the screen in the action comedy, Harrelson telling me he entered the relationship wanting to learn from Hart. You know, one of my first conversations was to ask him about how the hell he's so damn fit. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I really thought, I wish I'd have taken his advice because, you know, I'd be in a tight t-shirt right now. The Man from Toronto debuts on Netflix this Friday. We're getting a good look at the final two episodes of Stranger Things Season 4, which teases a massive showdown between the villain Vecna and Eleven. Your friends have lost. The episodes, which are movie land, hit Netflix a week from Friday. And hopefully these girls are having fun on their birthdays. Iconic singer Cindy Lauper is 69 today, while screen legend Meryl Streep is 73. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Good for her. I didn't know she was 73. She's fantastic. We just watched uh, Devil Wears Prada the other day. I did too. It's a classic. Yeah, she looks great. Yeah. <laughs> Time now, 457, 77 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to update you on who is expected to testify in hearings today regarding the January 6th riots at the Capitol. Plus, Amazon showing off its new autonomous warehouse robot. Yet we got more robots on the way. We're going to explain in today's Tech Bites. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide. Again, things are moving there at I-35 at Knox, but we are going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. One man shot and killed on San Antonio's northeast side. We have the latest details from police. New video raising questions about Ivanka Trump's testimony to the January 6th committee. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting at 77 degrees, and I think it's a little more humid than it was yesterday morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It is June 22nd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. You're a trooper, though. You went for a run yesterday in the triple-digit heat. I, I did. I, you know, but a very short run mm -hmm. and, you know, took all, you know, sunscreen. I had Smart. my water and my hat, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to call this short. <laughs> it's very, very hot out here. See, short for you is still two miles. Yeah. It's still, like, double of what I would even think about no. doing. Just out there like limping a no, full mile. You'll be out there. So Mike, can we have any escape from the heat anytime soon? Uh, soon, no. Was this in the afternoon? Like the hottest part of the day? Well, actually, well, Max gave me more credit. It wasn't triple digits yet. Oh. Not yet, but it was still hot. <laughs> but don't forget, if you're in the direct sun, it feels maybe 10, 15 degrees hotter because you're not only feeling the air temperature, but the sun's also heating you up. So that's why you really got to be careful. Lots and lots of water, as the experts always say, don't wait until you're thirsty because that's too late. So just if you're going to do anything outside, hydrate and more hydration. 78 degrees right now and that bottom number dew point measure moisture in the atmosphere. It's actually up a couple of notches even compared to yesterday. So yes, it is more humid when you step outside. And yes, we are going to be hitting triple digits once again today like we did yesterday. And a couple of uh, stray showers are still possible out there. Now the aquifer took a big hit down one tenth of a foot and uh, saws customers still stage two water restrictions. Of course, check with your local municipality to 
to see what watering restrictions may or may not be in effect. Mold is on the low side. So with that humidity out there right now, of course, we do have somewhat of a heat index to deal with at about uh, two, three degrees to the actual air temperature. And that's what it feels like to your body. 81 Stinson and Castroville. And we're going to be seeing heat index readings up into the, the low hundreds later on today. Very warm, very humid, and then mostly sunny 100. And it'll feel like about 102 or so later on today. A stray shower like yesterday, like the day before, one or two of those are going to be popping up. Most everybody won't see it, but at least there's a couple of them out there. Probably the same thing tomorrow. Now, problem is, though, it is going to be getting hotter as we go on into especially Friday and over the weekend. We're looking at low hundreds for high temperatures over the weekend. Then we get a little bit of a treat. Still, we're looking at some OK rain chances the first part of the week, and then that with a little bit of a front kind of lying in the area, the extra cloud cover, some of that rain should hold temperatures down closer to actually normal readings as we start off next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Capasos, what's going on? Good morning, Mike. Well, so far, so good. On the roadways, we're not really spotting any big issues out there. Now, we did see some flashing lights out toward 35 in Knox, but that has cleared out and traffic is starting to move through there. But uh, take it easy because there are a lot more folks. You can see it right there, the stretch of traffic lights. Keep in mind, uh, it's still very early on. We'll likely see some issues pop up as the morning does get going. But right now, you can enjoy the ride and play Beyonce's new single on the way to work. All right, let's get a look at the roadways right now because we're not spotting anything major. As I just mentioned, we do have a lot of those active construction spots. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the newscast and make sure you have your phone handy when we do. But for now, if you are going to be traveling into San Antonio, let's check out those travel times for you right now because the journey from Bernie right now, 25 minutes at this hour on I-10 coming in those eastbound lanes. Bulverde, we're looking at a 28 minute drive time. We're seeing some yellow in those southbound lanes, so just prepare for that. And a 20 minute, 25 minute drive time coming in from New Braunfels. Not too awful. All right, let's go ahead and take it back here to Transguide I-10 at the Y-410 at Fredericksburg. People are up. The morning is moving, but again, have those phones handy. We're going to have some updates on the construction spots coming up a little bit later on. Max stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police tell us one person shot and killed overnight. This is what we know right now. It happened around 1 a.m. This is the 6800 block of Glendora Avenue. It's near I-35 on the city's northeast side. Police tell us when they got there, they found a man in his 30s with a gunshot wound to his head. Investigators say a neighbor heard a gunshot, saw the man lying on the floor, and called 911. Now that victim pronounced dead on the scene at last check. Still no suspects in custody. Well, we keep learning new information when it comes to the police response at Robb Elementary. Now, more than four weeks after that shooting, a hearing in Austin revealed this. The head of DPS saying police had enough weapons, they had enough ammunition, and they could have stopped the gunman three minutes after he entered the building. DPS Director Steve McCraw calling this police response an abject failure. The on scene commander waited for radio and rifles. Then he waited for shields. Then he waited for SWAT. Lastly, he waited for a key that was never needed. Officers were in the hallway for more than an hour while the gunman was in that classroom with the children. McCraw testifying that the classroom door could not be locked from the inside and that officers apparently waited for keys without even trying to open the door. McCraw says that Pete Adedondo, the on-scene commander previously, Adedondo said he was unaware that he was even in charge even though the school is within his jurisdiction. When asked why DPS did not take control of the scene, McCraw said troopers did not have legal authority. And meanwhile, Uvalde's mayor says Robb Elementary will be torn down. There are also changes when it comes to Pete Edendondo. The Uvalde City Council members voted unanimously last night to deny his request for a leave of absence from future council meetings. If Edendondo fails to attend three consecutive city council meetings per city policy, the council could hold a special election and vote to remove him. Uvalde's mayor is defending how the city has handled the shooting in the last four weeks. McLaughlin says information coming out about the shooting is from DPS, the FBI, lawmakers, or the district attorney's office, not the city of Uvalde. He says he will visit the DA's office later today to find out what he can release. The whole entire world is going to see the graphic images of all these children that we're trying to refrain from seeing, and that's not fair to us.
Meanwhile, a group of bipartisan senators have reached a deal on a gun reform bill. Texas Senator John Cornyn says this bill will save lives. The measure would toughen background checks for younger gun buyers. However, the bill would not raise, raise the age requirement for assault rifles from 18 to 21. Senate members have to still debate the bill before holding a vote. Well, we're just getting word this morning that President Joe Biden will call on Congress in a speech later today to suspend the federal gas and diesel taxes until the end of September. This is according to senior Biden administration officials. This move is meant to provide Americans some relief, but it is not enough to resolve the problem of these surging energy prices that we keep seeing. Now, Biden will also call on states to take steps removing their own taxes on gas and diesel. President Biden also expected to tell oil refining companies to increase their capacity ahead of their planned meeting this week with the White House. And now to the public hearings on the Capitol riots. The committee is reviewing new evidence that appears to cast some doubt on the testimony former President Trump's daughter gave the panel in a recorded deposition. ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest. This morning, questions about Ivanka Trump's sworn testimony to the House Select Committee investigating the Capitol riot, specifically when she testified about the days immediately following the 2020 election, when despite former President Trump's claims, Attorney General Bill Barr declared there was no widespread fraud. I respect Attorney General Barr, um, so I accepted what he said was saying. But according to the New York Times, nine days after that bar statement, Trump's eldest daughter was captured in an interview by a documentary filmmaker actually expressing a different view. She endorsed the idea that he should continue fighting, that he should um, keep seeking every legal remedy, uh, legal remedy were her words. Part of the documentary now turned over to the oh, January 6th panel. Tuesday, the committee hearing emotional testimony from Georgia election worker Shea Moss and her mother, Ruby Freeman, the two receiving death threats after Trump and Giuliani falsely accused them of election tampering. There is nowhere I feel safe. Nowhere. The fourth January 6th public hearing detailing a campaign of lies and intimidation by Trump and his allies to try to overturn the election in key states like Arizona and Georgia. Pressuring public servants into betraying their oaths was a fundamental part of the playbook. Arizona's Republican Speaker of the House, Rusty Bowers, testifying. Trump and Rudy Giuliani tried to persuade him to convene a special session of the state legislature to approve fake electors for Trump. Giuliani pressing hard. He would say, aren't we all Republicans here? I, I, I would think we would get a better reception. The committee sharing more evidence linking Trump directly to the fake elector plot in other states and then sharing text messages suggesting GOP Senator Ron Johnson wanted to deliver those fake electoral votes to Vice President Mike Pence to certify. Johnson denying any involvement. The hearing resumes tomorrow. The focus will be on Trump's alleged effort to use the Justice Department to overturn the election. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Time now, 510, 77 degrees now. And still ahead, we have more details about Audible's new deal with former President Barack Obama. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. All right, sun is still not out. How hot will it get today? How humid will it get today? We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Welcome back. In just seconds, a 62-year-old father drowned while swimming on a chute tube in the Comal River just last year. His family says Albert Aranda was a good swimmer and grew up around water. His son, Mitchell Aranda, is using his family's tragedy to warn families to be vigilant and think about water safety. It just it happens suddenly. Um, in the blink of an eye, he was, he was there and then he was gone. And we should have had life jackets. I completely agree, but it just never, it never crossed my mind because it's just such a relaxing, enjoyable time at the Kamel. Um, but you now this was definitely a, an eye opener for my family and for my friends. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department reports 82 people drowned last year. And Texas Family Protective Services reports 26 children have drowned so far this year. Time now, just about 515, 77 degrees out. And still ahead, why Microsoft is deciding to eliminate its facial recognition tool that claimed to predict gender, age, and emotional state. 
I'm always shopping the Real Real. They drop over 10,000 new arrivals every day. From luxury brands I'm obsessed with. Gucci, Rolex, Prada, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Cartier, Tiffany. All up to 90% off retail. And I love that it's been authenticated. No one else can say all that. Because no one else does it like the real real. Thousands of new arrivals daily. Up to 90% off retail. Endless luxury. The real real. Shop now and get 20% off at therealreal.com. Terms apply. <laughs> Asper Cream Arthritis. Full prescription strength. Reduces inflammation. Don't touch my piano. Kick pain in the Asper Cream. Listen, I'm done settling. Because this is my secret. I put it on once. No more touch-up. Secret has pH balancing minerals. And it helps eliminate odor instead of just masking it. So pull it in close. Secret works. In today's Tech Fights, the Obama's new podcast deal. The first couple's production company, Higher Ground, is moving to Audible after a three-year run with Spotify. Higher Ground is behind Michelle Obama's own podcast, as well as Bruce Springsteen and Barack Obama's podcast. The terms of the deal have not been disclosed. Changes are in the works for Microsoft's facial recognition tool amid criticism of its ability to identify a person's age, gender, and emotional state. The facial recognition features will stop being available to new users this week and will be phased out for existing users within the year. And Amazon introduces a new employee. Take a look at the retail giant's first fully autonomous mobile robot. According to Amazon, the robot will be used to move large carts around warehouses. I wonder if it gets paid in cash. C-A-C-H-E. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. That looked like a giant Roomba. Yes. Like, <laughs> it's just like a huge one to, I don't know, clean and do more, I guess. There was a lot of the facial recognition, the robots. It's like Terminator. Interesting segment. Steven is in the building. So, Steven, what's going on out there? Let's get a look at the roadways right now. 281 at Grayson. We are seeing things that are moving quite nicely right now. 281 there, uh, 35 at Knox. We saw some flashing lights out there a little bit earlier, but that situation has cleared out. And 410 at Callahan looks like you're in the clear as well. Let's go ahead and take you to the map because, again, not really a whole lot to talk about here. So, some good news for anybody that has to head out in the next few minutes. But as always, make sure you plan ahead for you over or early night or early night early bird or overnight commuters is what I mean. I need more coffee. We uh, have some equipment removal that will be taking place tomorrow. Now this is over off I-35 over on the northeast side of San Antonio. So uh, keep in mind, this will start at 8 in the evening, wrap around 5 in the morning. During that time, drivers can expect a single lane closure on the southbound frontage road from Pat Booker Road to Farrell Road. So keep in mind that will take place tomorrow, but starting tonight uh, into tomorrow. So one last look here at Transguide. Things look like they're moving just fine, but I know that a lot of people will probably get their coffee. I definitely going to need a sip more of mine. I'm still waking up. By Wait, the way, that the tech bite. I need some. Yes, the tech bite was sponsored by Skynet. <laughs> it's a Terminator <laughs> joke, Mike. I'm not sure if everyone yeah, got yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. And also, I'm just wondering, looking at uh, you three, I guess I didn't get the pink slash mauve memo. You got this the red. Is, uh, actually, yeah. coral. Yeah, you have it in the background. Coralish mauve. Okay. Coral, I'm not going to lie. I watched, uh, saw Steph walk in. I was like, all right, pink. Got it. Check. <laughs> Lift your leg. Check the socks too. Lift. Your oh yeah. We coordinated. Matches the tie. I'm not that flexible. Maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yesterday we had a couple of showers that popped up, and a lot of folks took a picture of, and I believe it was the same cloud uh, off their northeast uh, metropolitan area, looking off to the east and northeast, and it may have actually been a couple of claps of thunder in that. Great picture there, and we're going to have a couple of more of those uh, showers popping up later on today. We do have a few more clouds around, at least at this time of the morning, as compared to the past couple of mornings, and then obviously we're going to be seeing a whole bunch more sunshine later on today. Guess what? is back after a slight bit of a reprieve. We have some more of this uh, Saharan dust, which is going to be working its way on in here. So a little bit of that today. And then especially as we go into uh, tomorrow and it should be getting on out of here by Friday, looking at this computer model. So yeah, it may add to the uh, kind of orangey look and some of that haze out there, but especially with the uh, sunsets looking a little more orangish, a little more dramatic over the next couple of days. 77 and at uh, 7 o'clock, so we'll fluctuate again a degree or two throughout the course of the morning, 79 at 8 o'clock. And then as we go on through the morning, we make it up through the 80s, up to 90 today at noon. And then we are going to be topping off at 100. Now, like I said, 
Looking at that uh, cloud in the KSAC Connect picture, we will have a few more of those popping up later on today. A couple of those showers out there. Not really a heck of a lot, but just one or two of them. As far as the humidity, yes, it is higher this morning than the past couple of mornings. It will drop down in the afternoon, and then we go through that same 24-hour cycle again. So at least with the humidity dropping down somewhat in the afternoon, we won't have just outrageously high heat index readings, but add two, three degrees onto the air temperature, and that's going to put the heat index up there a little bit. Forecast high of 100, but it will feel just a couple of degrees warmer than that. Here's the uh, rapid update computer model, and it does have one or two of those showers, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a clap of thunder, especially off to the east, popping up. Just very you know, few and far between like we've seen the past couple of days. Then we have those better rain chances coming into the picture by later on in the forecast by the first of next week. So 90 at noon today, mostly sunny skies and then a high temperature 100. A couple of stray showers out there. Can't rule out one or two of them tomorrow. Then we heat up. Yep, it's going to be a toasty. It's the last weekend of June already. Whoa. Yeah, we're flying by. And it seems fast because we just celebrated the official start of summer yesterday. That's true. That is true. Meteorological summer started obviously the 1st of June, and we are still looking at the chance of rain by Monday, Tuesday, an okay chance of rain. So. Speaking of June, have we really gotten any rain? Mm. Uh, for the month, yeah. we had a couple of those little sprinkles. Some people uh, been like were lucky to get yeah. sprinkles, but not like uh, real rain. So we need this. Yes. Oh, yes. goodness gracious, yeah. Yeah. All right, hoping you're right, Mike. <laughs> Time now, 520, no pressure, 523, no. 77 degrees out. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Whoa. why even Jedi Knights are taking a summer break, plus Leia Sado joins Dune Part 2. Good morning and welcome back. So it is officially summer as of yesterday. Yes. And even Jedi Knights and Sith Lords need to take a break once in a while. CNN's David Daniel explains in today's Hollywood Minute. No stormtroopers, no TIE fighters, no threat of annihilation. Best vacation ever! Use the Force to party. Here's your first look at LEGO Star Wars Summer Vacation, the latest animated special from Lucasfilm and the LEGO Group, set on an ultra-luxurious galactic star cruiser. LEGO Star Wars Summer Vacation heats up August 5th on Disney+. Plus. It's very, it's very special. Leia Sadu reportedly is joining Dune Part 2. She's set to play Lady Margot, an ally to Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides. Filming is set to begin later this year. I mean, Woody Guthrie's, you know, he's the original punk. You know, he was, he went against the grain. He fought the good fight. He spoke up and sung about his beliefs. An album decades in the making. Woody Guthrie's daughter Nora let Celtic punk band Dropkick Murphys go through the legendary singer-songwriter's archives. The result is This Machine Still Kills Fascists, an acoustic album combining Guthrie's writing and the band's music. They'll perform it on their first ever reserved seating theater tour this fall. Tickets go on sale Friday, and the album comes out digitally and on CD September 30th and on vinyl in November. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Do you watch it? That's I think fine. so, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Time now, 528, 78 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, an update on what's next for a bipartisan gun safety bill that just passed a Senate procedural vote late last night. But first, a look at, oh, this is so awesome, at UTSA's new $90 million data science facility downtown, courtesy of Tiffany Huertas. An open door on an apartment has led to police opening a murder investigation. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it coming up. And taking a look outside with a live cam, if you step outside and you feel it a little more humid, you may mm. be right. We're at 78 degrees right now. Good morning. It is 531 this morning. It is June 22nd. So I didn't spend too much time out yesterday, but I did. I did have to walk to my car. Yes. And like, <laughs> it gets hot. Even, yeah. This is going to sound ridiculous, Mike, but even the walk to my car, I was like, am I getting sunburned right now? It's that powerful. I agree. I mean, you, it, and that's why it's important to wear sunscreen all the time. It's true. Yeah. And also experts, uh, yeah, on even the cloudy day, which is we're not going to have, but put it on, if you're going to be outside for any length of time, the experts always say, put it on before you go outside. Don't do it while you're out there, because even that five, 10 minutes, you can get to too much sun. Let it, you know, kind of soak in a little bit, but um, also, you know, walking to your car, if you are walking across a parking lot, like at the grocery store, that's just, 
I mean, think about it. You're getting the sun, you got the air, and then you got the, the heat coming off the pavement there. 78 degrees right now, dew points at 72. So that number, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, is actually up compared to the past couple of days. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more humid out there this morning, and we actually have a heat index of 82 at Port S.A. Now that number has gone up, 80 at the airport, Canyon Lake. Stinson is at 81, same thing with Castroville. We do have a light amount of mold. Of course, the update account is going to come out later on this morning, just after about 7 o'clock. 100 for a high temperature. There is that 10% chance for... You know, a stray shower or two. Um, we had a few of them yesterday. We had a couple of them the day before, maybe one or two of them tomorrow. It's not going to be anything really of any consequence. By the way, to answer your question, Max, from last half hour, a uh, tenth of an inch of rain officially out at the airport this month. But it is seems like forever since we've had any decent rain. We're going to take a look at that and take a look at those rain chances coming up the first part of next week. In just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what do you have to tell us, sir? Well, not much has changed over here, Mike. US 90 in Ogolitos, only difference now. We probably are seeing just a few more folks out there, but uh, no issues to report right now. So uh, drivers, if you plan to head out to grab that cup of coffee or breakfast taco, bring them over here, but you should be good to go. All right, let's get a look at the roadways over here on our map because we are seeing a lot of green and of course a lot of those active construction spots and we're going to continue to update update you on that as the morning does go on but thankfully no need to rush when you head out the door this morning travels taking you right here to the alamo city well let's take out those travel times 29 minutes on i-10 westbound coming in from seguin now we are seeing a 33 minute drive time uh, coming in from lavernia on uh, 87 so that's a little bit longer than usual so keep that in mind if you plan to travel up to san antonio from lavernia 28 minutes if you're heading in from floridasville so really we're still in the clear here, but we want to make sure that you're prepared before you head out the door as we get one last look here at the roadways. Again, we're going to have an update on some of those construction spots coming up a little bit later on. Max stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say what a neighbor saw and heard now has them looking into the death of a man on the northeast side. That man was found overnight with a gunshot wound inside an apartment in the 6800 block of Glendora. That's not far from I-35 and Eisenhower. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, exactly how did that neighbor discover the victim? Well, police tell us that the neighbor heard a gunshot and then later saw the door open on an apartment, noticed the man inside. Now, police wrapped up their investigation here at the scene about 20 minutes ago or so, 20 minutes ago or so. Uh, they were working in that apartment building there on the second floor on the right. Uh, they, they were called here about 1 o'clock this morning. I believe we may have video from earlier when police were out here working. About 1 o'clock this morning is when they got that call. They say they found a man in his 30s inside the apartment with a gunshot wound in his head, and he was dead when police arrived. Now, they say right now they don't have any suspects in this case. Uh, they don't have any information about exactly what happened. All they know, again, is that that neighbor heard a gunshot and then found the victim inside his apartment with the door partially open. So police are very much at the beginning stages of this investigation, what appears to be a murder investigation, because they say they did not find a weapon inside that apartment. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The United States now on the cusp of getting its first new gun safety law in years. A vote late last night sets up the bill to potentially pass the Senate this week. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on what's in it and what happens next. The yeas are 64, the nays are 34, and the motion is agreed to. That procedural vote in the Senate late last night puts a bipartisan gun safety bill on track to likely become law. Congress is back on the path to take meaningful action to address gun violence. It tackles the boyfriend loophole, mental health, school safety, red flag laws, and more. These 10 Republicans have said they'd vote for a bill based on that framework. Now Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is adding his support. That's enough Republicans to help Senate Democrats overcome a filibuster and pass the bill. I will now take the first steps to move this life-saving legislation on the Senate floor. But the chamber's second-ranking Republican is not on board. Senator John Thune says some people are concerned about red flag laws. Those take away guns from people determined to be a safety risk. A law that would allow police to confiscate firearms unconstitutionally and legally from American citizens who have not been charged, much less convicted of a crime. 
That description of the bill is misleading. Courts have repeatedly ruled in favor of such emergency actions. But it captures the fears some Americans have around gun measures. Regardless, the House and President have shown support for the new gun bill. That means the Senate filibuster vote will likely determine whether it becomes law. I expect the bill to pass the Senate by the week's end. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The family of Dante Wright reaching a settlement with Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Remember, police officer Kim Potter pulled over Dante Wright during a traffic stop in April last year. Potter mistakenly drew her gun instead of her taser, shooting and killing Wright. Brooklyn Center has agreed to pay the Wright family three and a quarter million dollars. The city also agreeing to change the policies and change their training related to traffic stops. The family's legal team says the settlement will likely include training for officer intervention, implicit bias and mental health crises. And starting on September 7th, American Airlines will end service to at least three cities due to the pilot shortage. The company will stop flying to two cities in New York as well as Toledo, Ohio. American will also stop flying to a city in Iowa. Those four markets are currently served by the airline's regional affiliates with up to two flights per day to larger hubs. A spokesperson for American says the company has 100 regional planes on the ground that it can't fly because there aren't enough regional pilots. Time now, just about 539, 78 degrees out. And still ahead, KFC has come up with okay. a new way to make sure its food is literally finger licking good. KFC looks delicious right yes, now. Sure does. And you don't want to miss this, a special behind the scenes look at UTSA's brand new School of Data Science right in downtown. Beautiful new building set to open just next year. Very exciting. And taking a look outside with live cam. Yes, we are starting human, but we are excited about any glimmer or chance of rain. We're going to check in with Mike about that later on. Good morning and welcome back. UTSA School of Data Science opens in just a few months and it'll be the place where data scientists get educated and lead intensive research. Tiffany Huerta has got a behind the scenes look of the new $90 million facility located here downtown. Our school, our vision is to inspire and prepare a uh, diverse generation of data scientists who, who can make our world more equitable, informed, and secure. Construction crews are putting the finishing touches of UTSA School of Data Science in downtown. The founding director of the school, David Manjo, explains how the facility will be used. One week you might be seeing poster session by students, undergrad students, presenting their research work. Um, you might have it rented out for a month by a professor who is doing a project with small robots called Swarm Robots. The school offers five graduate degree programs from artificial intelligence to computer science. Across the floors you have classroom space, you have convening space for events, and you have space where people just can bump into each other um, and learn from one another. Students will use these servers for research. And when they are working on projects with industry partners. Manjo says students will be prepared prepared for jobs of the future. They can take jobs as data analysts, data scientists, data engineers, and it's not just in tech companies. All companies are looking for students who understand the process of collecting data, analyzing it, improving it. Construction is set to be complete by next month and the school will open for the spring semester in January 2023. And we're just one of five schools in the country. And with the student body we have, we just stand out. We have so much to contribute to the city's growth, to people being able to participate in a really exciting part of the economy. Um, and let's try and keep those folks in town. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Only one of five schools in the country to have something like this. That's beautiful. And did you see the view? Oh, yeah. From, you know, from the inside of the building. Very nice. Yeah. All right, time now, 543, 78 degrees out. And coming up next, all our friends at the Animal Defense League are back with another pet that needs to go to a new home. Well, if you are looking for just an overabundance of energy, Julie has got the answer. Who is this little baby here? So. This cutie pie is named Susie. I want to call her Susie Q, but if you look for her on campus, it's Susie with a Z. Okay. She's only six months old. She is a pointer terrier mix, and she's awesome. And look at how, I mean, she's not 
a hyper dog. She's just got a lot of energy. Um, and you said with the pointer in there, she's going to be easily trained. She is really, yeah. I think, going to be very easily nice trained. We spent time with her yesterday, and she's a pleaser. Yeah. Yeah, and she's a submissive dog. Um, she wants to make you happy. If you give her attention, she is just going to be in your hip pocket. If you want a running partner, this is the yes. dog. Kids in the backyard with a tennis ball. As I say, everybody's going to sleep well at night. So. Yes, and she's an excellent splooter. We're doing the side lay right now, but she can do the doggy splits as well. So <laughs> she's a good, good girl. Just make yourself at home. So yeah. what y'all got going on? Well, um, right now with the heat, we are wanting to let the community know about um, how to best care for their pet. Um, you know, it's hot, hot. You know that better yeah. than anybody, Mike. So um, with us getting into triple digit temperatures, we want to be really aware of looking for signs of heat exhaustion in your pet. Um, we always advocate for keeping pets indoors. Mm -hmm. That's the best. But um, they, it's a, a state law that they cannot be tethered and they must always have access to water. Okay. Um, but really keep your pets indoors. And then um, if you do, signs uh, that your pet is suffering from heat exhaustion are, um, are gonna be panting, of course, we all know that, but also a dry nose and excessive drooling and then vomiting. Okay. Yeah, if it's hot and they're vomiting, you're in trouble. And the other thing, uh, as far as fresh water, make sure you change it often because even a, in a plastic bowl, it's gonna heat up very, very quickly. And don't forget about taking them for a walk. If you can't walk on the pavement barefoot, right. neither can they. Right. It's 40 okay. to 60 degrees hotter on the pavement than the outdoor temperature. All right. Great advice. And again, if you are looking for a bundle of energy, little Susie there, she is just a puppy, a sweet puppy. Mm -hmm. Head on over to the Animal Defense League 1100 in Akadoshis. Give them a call at 655-1481. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Mike. In your morning consumer headlines, for many people, the name Kellogg is synonymous with cereal. But in a big shakeup, Kellogg is splitting into three different companies. The first company will include Kellogg's North American Cereal Unit, which includes Fruit Loops, Frosted Flakes, and Rice Krispies. Mm. The second company will become its snacking unit, which includes Cheez-Its, Pop-Tarts, and Pringles. And last, a new plant-based foods company mm. that will be anchored by its Morningstar Farms brand. All right, speaking of food, KFC has a new unique way to make sure its food is finger licking good. The fast food chicken chain now offering finger sporks with its side dish meal. So <laughs> the finger spork replaces the handle on the restaurant's most popular eating utensil with a place for your fingers. Now, once it's firmly on, you can use the spork to eat your entire meal with your hands. KFC says it will give you two free ones when you order its KFC Sides Lovers Meal. What are you thinking about this? I could see all the kids putting them on yeah. <laughs> each finger. We had a, a big laugh from, from Mike Osterhage to my right. So, Stephen, what are you thinking? No, I want to know what Mike thinks. It looks like you have some pending thoughts. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking because oh, you, you hold a, a chicken leg like this and then you can just, you know, you don't really have to put it down. Mm. Get your finger in there, get some corn yeah. mashed potatoes. And <laughs> <laughs> we needed that diagram yes. on camera. It's the future. Of <laughs> the future. <laughs> All right. Let's get a look at the roadways right now and uh, just take a quick drive around town. I don't know if anyone's planning on going to KFC this early, but if you are going to go grab some breakfast tacos, we're all for that. US 90 and Ogolitos, things are looking fine. It's kind of been a copy and paste situation this morning. Really not a lot to talk about. The only difference is more folks out there and lots of active construction spots. Really quick reminder, I-10 over here on the east side of Bear County, debris removal still taking place. Now we have about two more days to go of this, but you can expect that to start at 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon during that time an alternating right lane northbound and southbound loop 1604 closure there at the I-10 intersection. But back here on Trans Guide, things look fine. But don't forget, all those construction spots are updated on our website each week. Just go to ksat.com slash traffic. Just thought of something else. Okay, okay. the you future. Put, no, you put on two fingers mm -hmm. and you can get a, a, some of the corn and mashed potatoes and just do that oh. and, and oh, I love <laughs> just like that. Or you just mix the corn and mashed potatoes preemptively. No, 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 you want to you know. And then you just, you know, you can scoop them. Like you, will, you will benefit from this new, new utensil. Yeah. You better copyright yeah, this two scoop idea, Mike. They might steal it from you. <laughs> can you, I don't know. Anyway, uh, back to <laughs> what Julie was talking about from the uh, Animal Defense League. And we were talking about dogs going for a walk. Okay, boy, if you can get your dog to, to put on little gym shoes there. 
That's a great idea. And like she was saying, if you can't walk on the pavement, neither can your pet. So just to obviously keep that in mind. And also, as uh, Julie was talking about, um, you know, watch for those signs of any heat stress in animals as well as yourself. Obviously, we do have a couple of clouds that are hanging around here right now, and we're talking about rain. We've only had a tenth of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport in the month of June. It has been 29 days going back into uh, late May when we've had more than a quarter of an inch of rain. It has been 58 days since we had more than a half an inch of rain and 139 days already going all going all the way back, I should say, to the 1st of February when we had more than an inch of rain out there at the airport. So yes, we are in dire need of it. Um, we'll have a couple of showers around today. It's not going to amount to really a hill of beans at all, but at least there are better rain chances coming in here next week. Temperatures are going to be going through the upper 70s. We'll have some more sunshine later on this morning. Obviously, we make it into the 80s by mid to late morning, 90 at noon. And of course, we're going to be topping off at 100 today. Yes, one or two of those stray showers are going to be popping up here or there. We had a couple of them around the past couple of days. There will be a couple of more later on this afternoon popping up here and there. Uh, you could have an OK shower, you know, a little bit of uh, lawn watering here and there. Maybe just maybe off to the east, a, a clap of thunder, but I kind of doubt that. So that's going to be the situation in through the rest of today. But then also this computer model wants to have a couple more of them to be getting scared up tomorrow afternoon. So yeah, we'll take it. It's not going to, like I said, really be anything of any significance. But then later on in the forecast, we've got the uh, still fingers crossed an okay chance of rain starting off the first of next week. 90 at noon today, mostly sunny skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 100. A few of those stray showers, one or two of them around here tomorrow as well. Now, we are going to start to heat up the next few days, Friday and through the weekend. We're looking at 102 here in town. And then that chance of rain, looking for about a 30% chance of rain by Tuesday. So keep your fingers crossed for that. We've got a lot more coming up. Stick around. Good morning. Coming up right here on GMA, we're following the latest on the bipartisan breakthrough on gun safety. Senators taking the first steps for the compromise bill now. The latest on the chances it actually passes. Also this morning, powerful testimony on the January 6th hearing about former President Trump's campaign to pressure local officials to overturn the election. That's coming up right here on GMA. Right now on KSAT.com, our team taking you underground and into the Honey Creek Cave in Comal County. Now, some have called it a slice of paradise. The cave is under privately owned land, but we had some special access. You can take a look right now, KSAT.com. A lot more ahead on GMSA, ahead in our next half hour. Is it possible for younger employees and older employees to get along in the office? We take a look at the generational gap in the workplace. And of course, a lot going on, beautiful sunrise in the distance. We're gonna check in with Steven and Mike in just a bit. This morning, a lot of questions after a man was found shot and killed overnight. We have the latest from investigators. New video raising questions about Ivanka Trump's testimony to the January 6th committee. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And yes, we're starting humid again, and yes, it will be hot, but there is a small chance of rain for some people out there. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Wednesday. It is June 22nd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. The sunrise in the background is gorgeous. Very beautiful. Enjoy that and enjoy the 78 degrees we have for now, <laughs> even though it's humid. <laughs> Mike's scoffing at the temperature. <laughs> I, I, some people love the heat and humidity, so you may definitely be enjoying this. Um, I am not personally one of those folks, but uh, it's going to be hot and, uh, yeah. you know, humidity will drop a little bit later on this afternoon. But as far as rain, yes, there are going to be one or two of those pop up showers again today. We had a couple of them yesterday. We had a couple of them the day before, maybe even tomorrow. Not really a big deal, kind of a gee whiz thing. And then still looking at some better rain chances next week. First of all, a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. A couple of little uh, holes here and there. And heat index readings feels like 80 at Canyon Lake, 81 Port SA, as well as at Castroville. 83 right now is the heat index at Stinson. Humidity is up 
compared to even what it was yesterday. So yeah, it's pretty darn humid out there. Mold is on the low side this morning. The updated count is going to come out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. Temperatures will stay pretty steady with all this humidity, with that cloud cover. That doesn't allow things to really vary all that much in the morning hours. Wind's going to be out of the southeast today, not overly breezy, 10, 15 miles per hour. We're going to make it up to 90 today at noon. And then high temperature, yep, we're going to do it again. We hit 100 yesterday. We will hit it again today. Again, those one or two stray showers here or there. It's going to get hotter as the week rolls on, unfortunately, before those OK rain chances come into the picture to start off next week. All the details for the last weekend, last weekend of June already. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what's going on? Not a whole lot, Mike. Well, we can offer some relief on the road here. 35 at Ben Zingleman. This was that gorgeous shot that we showed you as we went to commercial break. Uh, frozen right there, but you can see traffic is moving now and without any trouble. And really, as we took a look around town throughout the morning, we haven't spotted any big problems that would cause you to have any problems with your commute. But just remember, both eyes on the road and both hands on the wheel. That's always the best way to go. Let's show you the map because what we really have been showing you is the exact same thing that we've been showing you throughout the morning. Lots of green and lots of those active construction spots in the morning it has stayed quiet. So we've been able to talk a little bit more about that, but we'll continue to watch the roads closely. But for now, if you're going to be traveling into San Antonio, let's check out those travel times because 37 is still pretty pleasant coming in from Pleasanton in those northbound lanes with a 27 minute drive time. It's going to take about half an hour to get from Highway 90 and Castroville in the eastbound lanes to downtown San Antonio, but your arrival from Lytle should be about a 17 minute drive time on I 35 northbound. So we are in the green. If you are traveling from any of these communities, looks like Pleasanton went up a minute, but right now it looks like you're in the luck here, especially at 35 at Ben's Engelman. Just remember to stay focused on the roads. Max stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say one person is dead after being shot overnight. It happened around 1 a.m. in the 6800 block of Glendora Avenue. That is near I-35 on the northeast side. Now, police say when they got there, they found a man in his 30s with a gunshot wound to the head. They say a neighbor heard a gunshot, saw the man lying on the floor, and called police. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. So far, there are no suspects. And it's been nearly a month since the horrific mass shooting in Uvalde, and we keep learning new information about law enforcement response that day. So during a hearing in Austin yesterday, Steve McCraw, the head of DPS, says police had enough weapons and had enough ammunition to stop the gunman three minutes after he entered the building. Officers were in a hallway for more than an hour while the gunman was in a classroom with children. McCraw testified the classroom door could not be locked from the inside and that officers apparently waited for keys without trying to open that door first. So McCraw also revealing that Ruben Ruiz, police officer for the school district and husband of Eva Mireles, one of the teachers shot and killed, he was trying to save his wife. Instead, his gun was taken away from him and he was escorted away from the scene. And meanwhile, a group of bipartisan senators reached a deal on a gun reform bill. The measure would toughen background checks for young gun buyers. That's right. It would also require sellers to conduct background checks. Gun traffickers would also get stiffer penalties. However, the bill, if passed, will not raise the age requirements for assault-style weapons from 18 to 21. We are going to have more on the deal and more details from yesterday's hearing in Austin coming up in our next half hour of GMSA. And speaking of hearings, now to the January 6th public hearings, the committee reviewing new evidence that appears to cast some doubt on the testimony that former President Donald Trump's daughter Ivanka gave to the panel in a recorded deposition. This as a U.S. Senator is denying claims he was part of the plot to deliver fake electors to former Vice President Mike Pence. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. Good morning. The full context of Ivanka Trump's comments are still unclear, but we're told the January 6th committee now has at least part of the video. This morning, questions about Ivanka Trump's sworn testimony to the House Select Committee investigating the Capitol riot, specifically when she testified about the days immediately following the 2020 election, when despite former President Trump's claims, Attorney General Bill Barr declared there was no widespread fraud. I respect Attorney General Barr. Um, so I accepted what he said was saying. But according to the New York Times, nine days after that bar statement, Trump's eldest daughter was captured in an interview by a documentary filmmaker actually expressing a different view. 
Part of the documentary now turned over to the January 6th panel. Tuesday, the committee hearing emotional testimony from Georgia election worker Shea Moss and her mother, Ruby Freeman. The two receiving death threats after Trump and Giuliani falsely accused them of election tampering. There is nowhere I feel safe. Nowhere. The fourth January 6th public hearing detailing a campaign of lies and intimidation by Trump and his allies to try to overturn the election in key states like Arizona and Georgia. Pressuring public servants into betraying their oaths was a fundamental part of the playbook. Arizona's Republican Speaker of the House, Rusty Bowers, testifying. Trump and Rudy Giuliani tried to persuade him to convene a special session of the state legislature to approve fake electors for Trump. Giuliani pressing hard. He would say, aren't we all Republicans here? I, I, I would think we would get a better reception. The hearing resumes tomorrow. The focus will be on Trump's alleged effort to use the Justice Department to overturn the election. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Topping your morning consumer headlines, President Joe Biden preparing to call on Congress to suspend the federal gas and diesel taxes for three months. So it is a movement to ease financial pressures at the pump that also reveals the political toxicity of high gas prices in an election year. Administration officials say President Biden wants to suspend the 18.4 cents a gallon tax on regular gasoline and 24.4 cents a gallon on diesel fuel. So if the gas savings were fully passed along to customers and consumers, now people would save roughly about 3.6% at the pump. Prices are averaging about $5 a gallon for regular across the country. Lawmakers in both parties have been skeptical about this idea. Hundreds of pilots at Southwest Airlines hitting a picket line in Dallas to protest the conditions they say are leading to delays and cancellations. Members of the pilots union are trying to put pressure on airlines to boost pay and hire more pilots. Facebook reaching a deal with the Justice Department over allegations of discriminatory housing ads on Facebook's platform. The social network agreeing to court oversight and is promising to change the algorithms. A lawyer for accusers of Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson says Watson has settled 20 cases brought by women accusing him of misconduct. Attorney Tony Busby, who represents all 24 accusers, says all but four lawsuits have been settled. Some of the civil suits accuse Watson of sexual assault. The former Houston Texans quarterback also remains under investigation by the NFL. The league could suspend him if it finds he violated its personal conduct policy. Our San Antonio Spurs announcing a new jersey sponsor. So it is self-financial or just self. That's what's going to read on the patch on the jersey. It's an Austin-based company with credit building technology. So Josh Primo at yesterday's jersey unveiling. Now self, the company, will replace San Antonio-based Frost Bank as the patch. Remember, Frost Bank chose to put their money and their name rights on the rock at La Quintera. That is the Spurs' $500 million development on the northwest side. That development will include the Spurs' new training facility and state-of-the-art medical and research offices to go along with a park and community spaces. The next order of business is a big one. It's the Spurs' naming rights for the stadium. Remember, this comes after the arena. Well, that 20-year deal for $40 million with AT&T, that ran out at the end of last season. So we should find out a new name for the new arena come this fall. And don't forget, Spurs ready for this year's draft. We have a ton of first round picks this year. You can watch the NBA draft right here on KSAT 12. It is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I'm going to have to ask you questions about this draft. Oh, yeah. We've been doing extensive research. We've got three first round picks. That's good news. Yeah, it's great news. Awesome. All right, time now 610, 78 degrees out. And the Aggies, yes. Ooh. Still ahead on Team USA, the Aggies baseball team. Moving on after taking down Notre Dame, we're going to have the highlights. And Amazon has a pretty cool new employee. We're going to introduce you to them in just a bit. Again, looks like a giant Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> Let me clean this whole warehouse. Okay, taking a look outside with live cam. Looking nice. Sun looking good right now at 6.10 in the morning. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back in today's Tech Fights. The Obama's new podcast deal, the first couple's production company, Higher Ground, moving to Audible after a three-year run with Spotify. Higher Ground is behind Michelle Obama's own podcast, as well as Bruce Springsteen and former President Barack Obama's podcast. Now, the terms of the deal 
have not yet been disclosed. And changes are in the works for Microsoft's facial recognition tool amid criticism of its ability to identify a person's age, gender, and emotional state. The facial recognition features will stop being available to new users this week and will be phased out for existing users within the year. And speaking of technology, Amazon introducing a new employee. Take a look. This is the retail giant's first fully autonomous mobile robot. So according to Amazon, the robot will be used to move large carts around warehouses. It's frustrating because they didn't give us a name. They say, meet our new employee, but right. they didn't introduce them. Well, I'm going to call it large Roomba. <laughs> it looks like or Roomba big or something. I think we need to spur the creativity a little bit. Yeah, it just looks like a giant, you know, vacuum cleaner. What was the uh, the futuristic Pixar movie from a few years back? Wally. -E. Wally. -E. Oh, yeah. Wally. -E. Yeah, we can name him Wally. -E. Steven, are we yeah. okay with naming that robot Wally? -E? No, because uh, no. That's, <laughs> there's already a robot named Wally. -E. We can call him just a uh, Amazon bot, just Scooter. for now. Okay. Yeah, Scooter. I like, I like that. I, 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 I can roll with that. Oh, well done. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for somebody <laughs> catching on my uh, my jokes over here. All right, let's get a look at the roadways right now. 35 at Ben's Engelman. I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera to a rotation. You can see there looking like things are moving just fine. But as we take a drive around town, there's US 90 at Nogalitos. Uh, as Mike mentioned earlier, sun's peeking out in some of these shots, but really not going to find any trouble just yet. Uh, but keep in mind, very early this morning. Uh, so we could likely see that change. 6 a.m. is usually the hour when things really start to pick up. But I do want to remind our folks at home, grab those phones and have your camera app ready. In just a moment, we're going to talk some construction spots that you can access, but we'll start here. Loop 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. Drainage work taking place. We've been mentioning this since Monday, uh, but should be wrapping up on Monday, July 4th. So we still have some ways to go, but keep in mind this will start at 9 in the morning at 5 in the afternoon. During that time, a full closure of the southbound to northbound turnaround right there at Gulebita Roads. Now, I hope you have those phones. Open up those camera apps and scan that QR code. We forgot to mention this a little bit earlier, but Tap the center of your screen. That's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page, and that has the latest closures that are taking place in our area, and of course, anything else that is impacting your drive time. But right now, things are moving just fine. Yeah. So back to those robots. Mm -hmm. I assume the difference being because it says they're fully autonomous, because mm -hmm. they've had those little things, but right. don't they follow like a tracker or something right. or a wire? So in the this floor? one does its own thing. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. You I getting like nervous, Mike? It's it the looked, future. It looked like it had eyes. In the video, <laughs> it did. and that it was blinking, like yeah. or winking, wink. <laughs> Maybe I'm looking. This at is getting it. scarier as the conversation <laughs> continues. Mike, how's the weather looking? Yes, yes. that's better. It, you know, it kind of brings up, reminds me of the the meme oh, that yeah, we're saying with this. Good. Isn't it weird it. that computers are now asking you to verify mm. that you're not a robot? Are you a robot, Mike? So, no. no. Would you so. tell me if you are? Would I tell you if I yeah. <laughs> He can probably do the robot. Oh. oh. What, was it? what was the guy's name in uh, Alien? <laughs> Who was the, uh, actually the, the robot guy? Uh, anyway, 77 degrees right now. <laughs> it is uh, a little more humid than we had around here yesterday. Dew points at 72. That number, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere is up compared to yesterday. So yes, it is more humid when you step outside this morning. And the humidity will be dropping down somewhat by later on this afternoon. Still, boy, if you're outside, take it easy. All right, one or two folks over there at uh, 410 Ray Ellison picked up a shower yesterday, but notice all the sunshine in and around that very small showers that popped up. That's going to be the situation again today and maybe even tomorrow. So we're starting to see the uh, the sunrise out there right now. Beautiful view. We'll have a couple more of the clouds developing as the uh, the morning rolls on. We are going to be we're in the mid upper 70s right now and we'll make it up right around 80 at 8 o'clock and get into the mid 80s through mid to late morning hours and then 90 at noon and 90 three already at one o'clock 100 high temperature later on today 10 percent chance for again one or two of those showers to pop up around the area don't get your hopes up too high for it uh there'll be you know few and far between maybe count them on one hand that's going to be the situation in through dinner time and then going into the early evening hours again it's going to be hit or miss of far as getting one of these showers and it won't last all that long if indeed one does pop up in your backyard. Now jump ahead to the future and well between now and the weekend or including the weekend we're going to start to heat up. We'll have some morning clouds and that'll be about it and then sunshine in the afternoon. However, by Monday and Tuesday long range computer models do have a slightly better chance for some of these showers around here. Again, you got to 
take into account this does tend to kind of broad brush things painting in the rain chances, but these are better rain chances than obviously we've seen the past couple of days or even today and tomorrow. This is going to extend into Tuesday and it looks like even Tuesday night into uh, early Wednesday we will have some of these rain chances hanging around here. So this is a very encouraging long range computer models have been consistent over the past three days. So that's also very encouraging too. It's not written in stone yet, but um, it's it's enough to bring a smile to your face. I think as of right now, 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies, high temperature today, 100. Do it again, stray shower too. And tomorrow, a couple of stray showers. We will continue to stay in the triple digits all the way through the rest of the week. Again, like I said, it's going to be heating up going in toward the weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a sizzler last weekend of June and then encouraging rain chances for Monday and Tuesday and obviously the cloud cover and some other factors would keep temperatures down. That 93 on Tuesday uh -huh. seems like, a, you know, cold almost. That's <laughs> the average, the normal temperature right the now. The normal temperature? Wow. We would oh, be getting goodness. back down to normal readings. Yeah. Well, we're glad to be back to normal. Hopefully so, yes. Hopefully, yes. All right. Thanks, well. Mike. 621, 77 degrees out. And home sales have slowed for the fourth consecutive month as rising mortgage rates are discouraging buyers. That's ahead in your GMA First Look. Trilogy for COPD. <coughs> Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on If you've been playing down your COPD, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's time to make a stand. Start a new day with Trilogy. And I'm feeling good. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsen breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. In this morning's GMA First Look with mortgage rates on the rise, what you need to know to buy and sell a house. Sellers are going to have to come to the realistic expectation that the market is not moving nearly as fast as it was before. In Arizona, this realtor saying market uncertainty and rising mortgage rates might be making it easier for average home buyers to get in. We have inventory growing, which is a great thing because our buyers have been, you know, fighting for homes for the last two years, but that demand is not there right now. Sales for existing homes falling in May, down more than 8% from a year ago. An inventory of homes on the market is up over 12%. Coming up at 7 a.m., what you need to know about the timing, and we'll have the expert tips you need to navigate this increasingly tricky housing market. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. All right, how about them Aggies? The Fighting Texas Aggies facing another elimination game going against the Cinderella story. The Fighting Irish Notre Dame College World Series, no score top of the third. Aggies, bases loaded. The Irish bringing in their star freshman, Jack Finley, getting them out of the jam. And after one strikeout, the defense lets them down as we saw Dylan Rock with a no shot to the hot corner. Throw from third to first, hits the dirt, and they can't dig it out. Two runs will score, including Bernie Champions, Jason Thompson. Aggies up 2-0. It would be 3-0 following a sack fly. Here we go. Top of the fifth. Trevor Warner with a whammy. The solo blast to left, making it 4-0. And at that point, ooh, the Aggies never looked back. They get the huge win, 5-1. So they continue in the College World Series. Next up, taking on Oklahoma, 1 o'clock this afternoon. And I got to say, I know a lot of people aren't huge fans of college baseball, but I've been to the College World Series in Omaha and it is an electric environment. And I know for a fact, the Aggie fans and LSU fans, weirdly enough, they travel really well. So kind of a crazy atmosphere up there. They have a big group of support. Oh yeah. yeah I can see that. Pretty Definitely. cool. Good luck, Aggies. Time now, 626, 77 degrees out. And much more to come in our next half hour of GMSA, including the latest on the Uvalde school shooting investigation. 
And a man shot and killed overnight on the northeast side. Police left with a lot of questions. We're going to explain everything we know so far. A neighbor makes a disturbing discovery inside an apartment here. A man dead. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. Taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 77 degrees to start your Wednesday morning. What is it going to look for the rest of the day? When will we see rain? We're going to check it with Mike in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. We made it to Wednesday. It to Wednesday. I was blocking out the A for oh, a second Oh, yeah, just there. to remind people. Best way to start the day? GMSA. Look at that. <laughs> We're on it. <laughs> Did you guys rehearse this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, jump in on the phone, Mike. <laughs> gonna take the little act on the road there. So uh, to answer your question, we're going to see rain. A couple of showers later on today. You know, some folks got a brief shower yesterday, day before that again today, but better chances now are still in the picture going into the first part of next week. It is not written in stone completely, but it is very encouraging. As you can see, we have some of our morning clouds where this is the airport camera looking toward downtown and barely make out the Tower of the Americas right there and temperatures. It's actually warmer and a bit more humid than what it was yesterday. That number dew point is up to 72 it was right around 70 yesterday, which doesn't seem like a lot, but a couple of degrees makes a whole bunch of difference. 70 Seven right now is the uh, air temperature. The normal low right now is 74, so we're three above that. And all around yeah, the metropolitan area, Stinson, Kelly, both at 79 degrees. Converse over by Randolph, the cool spot, if you will, only in the mid 70s. We do have a low amount of mold. The uh, updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. So very warm and humid this morning. Then later on today, mostly sunny, 100. A couple of stray showers like we've had the past few days. Don't get your hopes up for rain. Um, probably the same situation tomorrow as well. But as we go in toward especially Friday and the weekend, it is going to be getting hotter. We're looking at low hundreds for high temperatures here in town. And then that I'm going to call it still an OK rain chance, 20 even 30 percent chance of rain going into the first couple of days of next week. And with that extra cloud cover, it's going to help to hold temperatures down closer to normal mid 90s to start off the week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? Not a whole lot over here, Mike. It has been a quiet Wednesday morning, but we do have a stall there. US 90 no Galitos. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now it does appear that that's near the exit off on the grass. So just keep in mind if you are traveling, make sure you check those vehicles. And of course, anytime you see one of those stranded drivers move over, slow down. We want to give them plenty of room and don't forget uh, the morning is getting busier as we're inching closer and closer to morning rush, but you can see another stall popping up near the area off 35. Believe that's near division. We'll have to take a closer look and find out which direction that is in, but uh, the morning really hasn't had a lot of uh, uh, issues out there this morning. You can see just a lot of those active construction spots as it stayed quiet. We've been mentioning that throughout the morning, so just take it easy out there. We hope that this trend continues. This is a good traffic trend, but uh, not looking good here for this driver off US 90 and no Galitos. That could be an abandoned truck but we'll keep a close eye on it. We'll find out how your morning commute shapes up as the morning does roll on. Max Steph. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police have opened a murder investigation based on what they found behind an open door. They say it appears someone shot and killed a man inside an apartment on the northeast side. It's in the 6800 block of Glendora, not far from I-35 and Eisenhower. Katrina Weber is there live. And Katrina, what have police found out about what happened there? Well, it seems that they're still in the beginning stages of their investigation, although they did spend about four hours here at the scene. What they have told us is that a neighbor called them around one o'clock this morning after hearing a gunshot, then noticing the door on a second floor apartment there was slightly open. Now, that neighbor also told police that there was someone inside lying on the floor. Officers got here and went inside where they realized that person was a man in his 30s. Police say he was dead and he had a gunshot wound in his head. Right now, they don't have any information on who may have shot him or why. The police say they did not find any weapons inside that apartment, which leads them to believe that someone else shot that man. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, it's been almost a month since the horrific mass shooting in Uvalde, and we keep learning more information about law enforcement's response that day. 
New details came to light during a hearing yesterday in Austin. Meanwhile, family members of the victims say they are looking for accountability and change. Sarah Costa joining us live in studio with more. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Stephanie. And during that hearing yesterday in Austin, Steve McGraw, the head of DPS security, says police had enough weapons and ammunition to stop the gunman just three minutes after he entered the building. Officers were in the hallway for more than an hour while the gunman was in a classroom with children. McGraw testified that the classroom door could not be locked from the inside and that officers apparently waited for keys without trying to open that door first. DPS Director McGraw called the response an abject failure. The on seat commander waited for radio and rifles. Then he waited for shields. Then he waited for SWAT. Lastly, he waited for a key that was never needed. McGraw says District Police Chief and City Councilman Pete Aredondo was the on-scene commander. Now, previously, Aredondo said he was unaware he was in charge, even though the school is within his district. Meanwhile, family members of Layla Salazar, one of the students who was killed, says change in law enforcement is needed. We're definitely going to need some change around here because we're going to need officers that that, that will that are willing to, to you know to do what they what they're supposed to do and it's going to be a long hard road it's going to be a long process but you know hopefully eventually we'll get the change that we want now last night the city, uvalde city council members voted unanimously to deny Aredondo's request for a leave of absence from future, future council meetings. Now, Aredondo has not attended a city council meeting since being elected. Now, if he fails to attend three consecutive city council meetings per city policy, the council could hold a special election to vote to remove him from council. And meanwhile, Uvalde's mayor, Don McLaughlin, defended how the city has handled the shooting in the last four weeks and accused the director of DPS, Steve McGraw, of misleading the public and not answering questions about his own officers. Now, McLaughlin says information coming out of the shooting is from DPS, the FBI, lawmakers, or the district attorney's office, not the city of Uvalde. He says he will visit the DA's office later today to find out what he can release. And meanwhile, Congress is one step closer to passing the most significant gun safety legislation in decades. This after weeks of bipartisan talk, senators have worked out the details of this bill and they're pushing for final passage by the end of this week. ABC's Andrea Fuji has the details. This morning, for the first time in nearly 30 years, Congress announcing a deal on gun safety. This is a breakthrough. And more importantly, it's a bipartisan breakthrough. The agreement coming after a group of 20 senators, 10 from both parties, spent a week behind closed doors. The bill includes enhanced background checks for gun buyers under the age of 21. It closes loopholes to prevent people convicted of domestic violence from owning guns, and it provides $15 billion in funding for states to implement programs aimed at addressing gun violence and bolstering school security and mental health. Not in the plan? A so-called red flag law that could prevent dangerous or troubled individuals from getting guns. But Texas Senator John Cornyn argues this plan will allow states to decide on their own regulations. This uh, grant program will give every state funding that implements programs that they themselves have adopted to stop individuals in crisis from reaching the point of violence or self-harm. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell vowing to support the bill, saying, For years, the far left falsely claimed that Congress could only address the terrible issue of mass murders by trampling on law-abiding Americans' constitutional rights. This bill proves that false. But last night, the NRA arguing otherwise, saying this legislation can be abused to restrict lawful gun purchases, infringe upon the rights of law-abiding Americans, and use federal dollars to fund gun control measures by state and local politicians. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, a persistent problem at the Bear County Sheriff's Office. The constant request for more money for overtime continuing year after year. And now, commissioners are approving another 140,000 hours of paid overtime at the jail. Sheriff Javier Salazar brought up two reasons for the need of the money, a growing jail population and staffing. 
When it comes to inmates, the sheriff says nearly 800 inmates should not be placed in the jail. He says more than 200 inmates continue to wait to be transported to prison. When it comes to staffing, Sheriff Salazar says more than 250 employees left the sheriff's office just last year. So far this year, already 72 people leaving their post. Meanwhile, commissioners voicing some ideas like possibly expanding tuition reimbursement programs, encouraging more prospective hires. The sheriff says he is also working with Alamo colleges in hopes of encouraging more people to join the force. And more than six months later, Lena Kill is still gone, seemingly without a trace. In an exclusive sit-down interview with R. Lee Waldman, Chief William McManus says their investigation is shifting. While the investigation into Lena's disappearance can't be called an abduction until any evidence directly points in that direction, McManus says they are treating her case as a hybrid missing person abduction case. All resources used in an abduction case are being used now. Originally, the missing persons unit was leading the case. Now the special victims unit has taken over. Unfortunately, as more time passes, tips about Lena have slowed significantly. Now Chief McManus says only a few have come in during the month of June. Does the hope of finding her alive and well start to diminish? Unfortunately, it does. Uh, to be candid, uh, we are still devoting uh, the resources necessary to locate her based on the tips we get. In this case, no piece of information is too small and all leads are being followed. If you know anything about little Lena, you are asked to call the missing persons unit at 210-207-7660 or Crime Stoppers, that number 210-224-7867. Some other top stories we're following the U.S. Coast Guard searching for two boaters who have been missing since June 13th. The couple set sail on June 8th from Hampton, Virginia, but five days later, they told loved ones their boat had been damaged and they were returning early. At that time, they were still more than 400 miles off the coast. No one has had contact with the couple since. And starting on September 7th, Air American Airlines will end service to at least three cities, and they're saying it's because of a pilot shortage. So American Airlines will stop flying to Ithaca and Islip, New York, as well as Toledo, Ohio. A spokesperson for the American company says that the company has 100 regional planes on the ground that simply can't fly because there are not enough regional pilots. Time now, 642, 77 degrees out. And is it possible for younger employees and older employees to get along in the office? Ahead on GMSA, we take a look at the generation gap in the workplace. And welcome back at 645. Gen Z, millenni Millennials, Gen X, and Boomers, for the first time ever, four generations are working together in the office. So the question is, can they all work together happily? RJ Marquez, breaking it all down, asks if it's possible for each age group to value each other at work. Take a look. Lisa Bates recently retired from nursing after 38 years. I was always older than everybody that I worked with. Almost half of all baby boomers say they disagree with millennials' work practices, while a quarter of older workers are seen as out of touch by younger colleagues. But are we really all that different? Generations tend to want many of the same things. They tend to want to have control. They tend to want to have autonomy over how they accomplish their job. And they tend to want respect. Managers need to facilitate conversations with their employees, let each one know what the other has to offer. The older employees often have way more experience and exposure. Reverse mentoring is also becoming popular, giving the younger employees opportunities to find new ways to approach old problems. Create diverse teams and provide opportunities for the different generations to get to know each other. They both may end up learning a lot. I learned so much from all the young kids, like, oh my gosh, so many cultural things that I, I lost touch with that that's the best part about wor working with young people is. <laughs> One of the biggest frustrations for workers under 30 is outdated technology. 27% of millennials dislike emails as a form of communication and actually prefer face-to-face -face or phone conversations. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News.
Thanks, RJ. I'm definitely an, a phone conversation kind of guy myself. But let's get a look here at US 90 No Galitos. We still have that stall vehicle out there, and you can see uh, the driver looks like he's receiving some assistance, possibly from a friend. But we did notice that there was a Textot Hero truck out there a little bit earlier. So hopefully uh, they'll get what they need, and that way they won't be there uh, stranded along the highway anymore. But for now, stalls seem to be that big problem right now. We're going to talk about this one off of Loop 410 southbound there at Valley High Drive. It's something that we're adding to the list. We have another one over. Over here off 35 in the southbound lanes at Division Avenue. So again, I know I say this all the time, but check those vehicles before you get out on the roadway. But if you do find some trouble out there with your vehicle, Hero Program Services are there for your assistance. Now first, they can assist drivers, our first responders with crashings, change flat tires, give air to low tires, and add gasoline or water. But their number right there at the bottom of the screen, 210-732-HERO. That's 4376. But keep in mind, you have to be stranded along a major highway to receive these services. Is a really useful tool there, but back here at Transguide, hoping that this driver will uh, receive that assistance and have a better update before the show wraps up, guys. We hope so. Thank you, yeah. Stephen. Uh, a lot of red out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're probably going to be seeing more of those dramatic sunsets uh, today in the next couple of days. A little more Saharan dust is going to be coming on in here. Another sort of plume of that won't last all that long. Just a, a few days should be out of here pretty much by the weekend. Right now, looking at downtown, we got some clouds hanging around here. This is the airport camera looking down there and there's the uh, the Tower of the Americas right there. And we'll see more sunshine, obviously, as the morning rolls on temperatures will warm up then fairly quickly 83 at 9 o'clock and then up into the mid to upper 80s late morning 90 at noon and we go all the way through the 90s same temperature profile as yesterday the day before that so on and so forth 100 high temperature today and also that 10 percent chance for one or two of those showers to pop up again this uh, the rapid update computer model which has handled these showers very well the past couple of days is uh, showing the same thing today just to a couple of them here and there. Don't get really excited about the rain chances at all. And this is going to be the situation tomorrow as well. Now jump to the future into Monday and a couple of long range computer models have been very consistent with this and are still showing that chance of rain by later Monday and then going into Monday night and Tuesday. Now again, I have to emphasize this does broad brush things as far as rain chances. Uh, it's not going to be raining everywhere constantly, but this is a much better chance of rain than we've seen in basically forever around here. And this is going to extend on into Tuesday, even a couple of thunderstorms as well, even Tuesday night and maybe early uh, into the day on Wednesday. So not written in stone yet, but it is, like I said, very encouraging as far as the consistency with these long range computer models. The high, which is sitting on top of us, uh, this is why things are going to be heating up or have been hot and then heating up as we go into the next couple of days, especially Friday and the weekend with this thing just sitting and it pushes down on the atmosphere. It's like a weight on top of us almost and that compresses the air and helps to heat it up. But it's still looking like that's going to kind of retreat to the west and that gets us into this northwesterly flow and that's what's going to be pulling down somewhat of a front, a very shallow little cool front lying in the area. That's going to be the focal point for some of those showers to start off next week and that combined with cloud cover to hold temperatures at least back down to normal readings. No big chill or anything like that, but at least it is going to be not as hot. 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies and then a high temperature today up to 100. A couple of stray showers out there. We get high hotter as we go into especially Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And then that chance of rain comes in here the uh, first couple of days of next week. So fingers crossed, rabbit's foot, whatever it takes. I hope that but, it, but it is looking yeah. encouraging. Yeah, we got two days on the big board. Mm -hmm. Big yeah. board sports. Yes, indeed. Big board rain. <laughs> big board rain. We hope. <laughs> Thank, yeah. you, Thank you. Time now 651 77 degrees out. And do your kids spend a lot of time on TikTok? Well, tomorrow on GMSA, oh. we're going to tell you about some of the dangerous TikTok trends you should be on the lookout for. Are they pouring, what, what was going on with that milk? I don't know. It looked kind of weird. <laughs> Maybe lot, that's the point. A lot of questions. <laughs> Beautiful start to the day. Only 77 degrees out now. We're going to check in with Stephen and Mike once more in just a bit. New this morning, police searching for at least one person after a shooting on the northeast side. This is a different shooting than the one we told you about earlier. This happening around 430 at an apartment complex on Mid Crown Drive near Walsham Road. Police on the scene telling us the suspect started shooting inside one of the apartments. One man was hit in the leg. 
He was taken to the hospital at last check. He is doing all right. But right now, officers searching for who is responsible. And time now 655. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. There's really not been a lot to talk about over here. Just a few stalls. Boarding has really been good as we've just been seeing things moving without any trouble there at 410 at Callahan. But the sun is out. People are moving. So just drive safe and be on the lookout because one of those stalls still remains off Loop 410 southbound at Valley High Drive. Second stall over here off I-35 southbound near Division Avenue, Mike. And yeah, a lot of sunshine in a couple of those transguide cameras. You can see the sun is shining off the trees. They're looking at downtown 77 still in town dropped to 69 in comfort 68 at Bernie stage. Big cool down up there in the hill country. We're going to make it up to 100 today. A couple of stray showers once again going to heat up this weekend and we're still looking at those decent rain chances to start next week. We will keep our fingers crossed for that. <laughs> yes. Rain. Definitely. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you have a great day. Stay cool, definitely. We'll see you back here, 9 a.m.